Good morning. Good morning. Today is December 10th, 2023. Our Sunday school lesson for today, uh, Sunday school lessons topic for today is facing life with confidence. Our key verse or uh, printed text is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 31 through 37, 45, and 48 through 50. Let us bow our heads for the, uh, a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come, Lord God, this morning with our heads bowed and our hearts turned to you, O oh God. We owe you a thank you. Thank you, Lord. You woke us up again this morning. You gave us the activity of our limbs, Lord God. You gave us a mind to come out to the house of prayer. We dressed ourselves, Lord God, rushed around, did everything that we were able to do, and we declare, as your word says, that we move and we have our being because of you. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for another blessed opportunity. Many don't see it as a blessed opportunity, but it's a blessed opportunity to be in your house of prayer. It is also a blessing to be alive today, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you that you've given us this mind to come out, to give you the praise, you the honor, you the glory that is due your name. We take nothing from you, Lord God. It was all you. We bless your name, O oh God. It's all you. We will bless you at all times, O oh God. Our dear praise, the praises, our praises. We will sing of you, O oh God, because you are a mighty God and you are a strong tower. You are our deliverer. You are our friend. You, O oh God, thought not less of us, but enough of us that you sent us your son. And because you sent us your son and we accepted him as Savior, Lord God, you have blessed us with the abundant life. Not counting our things, Lord God, but counting our blessings. Before we know that every good and every perfect gift, every blessing comes from above. And Lord, we just say thank you. And Lord, now as we study your word, for that is the purpose of gathering this hour, we ask you to hide each of us and help us to see what your word is saying unto us. And Lord, as we see it, help us to take that word and hide it in our heart. That we be not coward soldiers, but that we learn to walk in the same faith and confidence in you that David walked, Lord God. We love you, Lord, and we know that you have the master plan. And because you have it, Lord God, we rest in you, O oh God. We submit our will unto you, and we ask these things in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our key verse, 1 Samuel 17, verse 37, reads, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. Amen. 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 Today's lesson, Facing Life with Confidence, talks about people or us living lives that are guaranteed to face challenges. We will all, at some point or another, face challenges in our lives. These challenges may not necessarily look like they uh, looked in days, days of old, yet the challenge that is assigned to each one of us is the challenge that God has allowed to grow our faith. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has things that we must go through, situations. And there have been times when each one of us has either buckled under pressure, mm -hmm. run the other way, mm -hmm. tried to get uh, the challenge answered by some other means, mm -hmm. maneuvered, uh, told somebody else about the challenge so that they could help us to deal with the challenge, while others um, have realized 
that there is unlimited power and potential in the mighty God that we serve. Mm -hmm. In the world, the way to handle challenges was to do just that. Run the other way. <laughs> Get somebody else to work it out for us. You know, call in a favor. Uh, call in, you know, somebody we know. Or I got a connection here or there. But God, our God, the God we serve, has proven that he is God. And in his proving that to his children, we should be able to stand in the face of any challenge because of the God we serve. This should empower us to move forward with the same assurance that the same God that delivered me yesterday will deliver me today. The same God that did it even for my mama years ago will do the same for me today. So today's lesson is about having confidence. We uh, come in contact with people all the time who lack confidence. Sometimes we say they even lack self-esteem. They don't believe enough in themselves. But today's lesson is not about believing in ourselves. It's about believing in God. David demonstrates his faith in God by walking into this challenge with confidence. This is having a firm and an unwavering trust. We have to evaluate ourselves and our own lifestyles. Is my trust in God so firm that whatever comes my way, I'm going to give it to him? That's what we have. That's where each of us has to, to, to stand. As a believer, where is your faith in God? This confidence again says, come what may, my God will take care of me. This text tells of a familiar story that we've read uh, time after time after time of David and Goliath. And it demonstrates for us how to face life challenges with confidence, with that firm, unwavering trust that my God will work it out. Psalms 118 verses 8 and 9 in summary says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put my trust in a human being. It is better to trust in the Lord for he is my refuge and he is my strength. Our lesson is recorded from the book of Samuel. Samuel is not attributed to being the writer um, uh, uh, specifically, but it, it, the, the uh, commentaries share that the book of First Chronicles 29 and 29 says that it records the life of Samuel, Israel's last judge, and David, Goliath, and Saul, um, with writings from Nathan the prophet, from Gad, and possibly Samuel himself. At the time of our text today, David has already been privately anointed as king. Not publicly, but privately. 1 Samuel 16 and 13, uh, as instructed by God, Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse, to anoint a king. Samuel had mourned long enough for Saul as king. Samuel um, knew and God had told Samuel that he rejected Saul as king mm -hmm. primarily because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was still holding on to his kingship, but according to scripture, God's spirit had left him. The Lord sent to Saul a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. And his servants watched this happen and watched his demeanor. And they suggested perhaps we can get a musician, a harp player. Mm -hmm. This harp player turned out to be David, who had been privately anointed as king, but anointed as king by God's command. Mm -hmm. David, uh, they sent for him, and he came. Mm -hmm. Saul liked him. He was very impressed by him. And he made him uh, his heart player. He also made him a part of his staff. He became his armor bearer. Mm -hmm. The Philistines at the time are in power. Mm -hmm. And they are in war against Israel. Mm -hmm. So in verse, uh, excuse me, 1 Samuel 17, the beginning of the chapter, talks about the war and the setup for war. Saul gathered his troops on one side of the valley of Elah, and the Philistines gathered theirs on the other side. It almost explains it as though they could clearly see one another. They were separated only by the valley. These, um, these forces, these Philistines, had Goliath. We didn't heard about Goliath. And in our minds, as we've heard about a Goliath, we've almost just pictured him to be a character mm -hmm. and not a real man. Mm -hmm. However, he was real. Right. He was a Philistine. Amen. And the Philistines had a reputation of being some big folk. Right. But they were also some evil people. Amen. Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And he came out of the out of the out of out to face, excuse me, the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He came out, he was a giant of a man, mm -hmm. standing over nine feet tall. <laughs> Typically when we see somebody taller than us, mm -hmm. especially extremely tall, mm -hmm. we kind of, well, 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 my, how tall are you? You know, <laughs> everybody don't like that. He wore a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail that weighed over 125 pounds. You imagine that, I don't live but 10, 15, maybe 20 at a time. Grocery bags, mainly. But 125 pounds of armor is what he wore. In the days when the exodus of the exodus, when the Israelites were preparing to go in to take over the land as God had instructed them. Um, the Israelites were afraid to enter the promised land because of the giants that were living there. Numbers 13, verses 32 and 33, uh, excuse me, 30 actually, through 33, reminds us of this. And it reads, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and Caleb said, let us go at once and possess it, talking about the land. Mm -hmm. For we are well able to overcome it, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we, mm -hmm. the perception. And they brought up an evil report, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the land, they say, mm -hmm. eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. Mm -hmm. And there we saw giants, mm -hmm. the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Already defeated. Goliath, 
He wore bronze leggings. He slung a bronze javelin over his back. Mm -hmm. His shaft of his spear was heavy and as thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. An armor bearer walked before him carrying his shield. These armies had a standoff. The standoff in 1 Samuel 17 and 16 says that it lasted for 40 days. And during that time, Goliath came out two times a day and shouted across to the Israel's camp to let them know that they come to lose the battle, teasing and taunting the Israelites. Well, you need a whole army, he says, to settle this. That's the talk and the language of a champion. Why do you need all of y'all to come after me? Just send me one, and I'll go on and make this thing even. Mm -hmm. I'll go on and show you, if he wins, we'll serve him. If we win, y'all serve us. And he taunts them, and he taunts them, mm -hmm. and he defies the armies of Israel mm -hmm. because he refuses to obey what God has told them. When the Israelites heard Goliath taunting, they were just like they were in numbers, afraid. Well, God always raises somebody up who ain't scared. <laughs> who ain't scared. Who has confidence and who understands that God is God. Every believer ought to have that. That God really is God. That God really is in control. That God really is all we need. But they were afraid. So God raises up David. Jesse was the father of David. He had three older sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema, who were enlisted in the Israelites' army. They stayed with the army uh, during the war. And David, the shepherd boy, was sent back and forth walking, working for Saul and helping to tend to his father's sheep. Amen. Jesse sent David this day to take food to his brother, mm -hmm. a half bushel of roasted grain and ten loaves of cheese to their captain. Because I appreciate you looking out for my boys. Mm -hmm. See how they are getting along, he tells David, and bring back a letter, he says. I need a report, not your word, but a letter to know of their well-being. Mm -hmm. So David arrived at, at the Israelite camp, and his brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. He left the sheep with another shepherd, and he set out early the next morning with those gifts. He arrived just as they were leaving battle cries and shouts. He overheard Goliath, though, mm -hmm. shouting and giving his, champ, his uh, challenge to the Israelite army. Mm -hmm. When the army heard Goliath, they began to run away in fear. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the giant, they said? Because he comes out daily to challenge Israel. Have you heard about the reward? that will be given if he is killed. The king will give one of his daughters as, as a wife and his whole family will be exempt from, from playing, excuse me, paying taxes. Mm -hmm. David asked around. He had some questions about this. He had questions mainly about who in the world mm. thinks that they have the right mm. to defy the army of the living God. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. there ought to be something about what goes on in society that should get under our skins as believers when people are using the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. It ought to be something in the life of a believer that should be irritated when we see the world as it is. We ought to have something to say about it. We ought to have something to say about uh, people who criticize the church without without a reason. We, we there ought be there'll be something that kind of unnerves us 
when somebody just gives anything to a believer. It ought, it ought to be something when falsehoods are being taught, when false teaching goes forth. It ought to be something that irritates. Well, David was highly irritated. He wanted to know who in the world, who, who is he anyway? Who is this person who thinks he has the authority to defy the armies of the living God? Who is he? Who, who is that that has, a, has such a problem they ain't got no bit no problem talking about the child of God? Who is that that wants to criticize preachers? And the scriptures say, touch not thine anointed one. You don't get to dictate. We don't get to dictate who it is. Ours is to trust the true and living God. So David was upset. He had a reason to be. He had a reason to be, and he kept talking among the camp because he wanted to verify. It is what I'm hearing, the truth, and the story didn't change. But his big brother heard about it. Heard him talking to the men, and he got all upset. What you doing here? Anyway, why, why are you still here? Why didn't you just do what Dad sent you to do and going back? Why, why are you here stirring up trouble? He told David, I know your pride. And I know your dishonesty. You know, the family members, they know. They know, they know about what's going on at the house. So why, why, why are you here? I know. He said, you just want to see a battle. You want to see. And all of that discussion and questioning was then reported to the king. And that brings us to our point, our lesson uh, printed text, 1 Samuel 17. 31 through 37, 45, and 48 through 50. May I have a reader or readers, please? And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, but thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. <coughs> and David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept the wall of sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall not be as one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Forty-five through fifty, please. Then said David to the Philistine, Thy coming to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to, David, to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone, and slain it, and smote the Philistine in the forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him, but there was a no sword in the hand of David. Amen. 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 Facing life with confidence. Mm -hmm.
So the essence of this whole lesson is to observe David's faith. Amen. David's faith. He arrived at the camp when he went, I'm sorry, he arrived at Saul's uh, place because Saul sent for him. And he told King Saul to let no man's heart fail because of this Philistine. That I'll go and I'll fight this Philistine. So David went in first with concern for everybody else. Amen. I want you to notice that. Because see, everybody don't care nothing about you. I'm clearly. Amen. Clearly. Everybody not concerned about the body of Christ. Amen. Everybody not concerned about how women and children and, and husbands, everybody not concerned about that, clearly. But David was. He was concerned with the whole army of Israelites, the whole group of people, okay? So he went in and he tells Saul. Saul is already convinced that David, David wasn't able. Remember, they already told the king what David was saying. They, 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 already, they already told him. And so send him to me. Keep in mind, David is between the ages of 12 and 16. And a lot of times, we don't want to hear what children have to say. I said children, pay attention. Saul was already convinced he wasn't able. You are but a youth, he says. And Saul has been, I'm sorry, Goliath has been a man of war since his youth. Mm -hmm. Saul was not examining with the spiritual eye. He couldn't because the Lord had already taken his spirit from him Amen. at this point. Amen. So Saul was not looking at a spiritual eye mm -hmm. through one, but he was looking at experience. He was looking at uh, uh, what he knew about Goliath. And that's common for us, too. We like to look at the checklist of, did he? Did he? Or did she? Or did she? Yep, yep, yep. And the no list, you know. So then that list sometimes becomes your pros and your cons. Rather than looking with the spiritual eye. Again, that was the way of the world. When we were living in the world, that's fine. But we are now a part of God's family, so God gives us the lens by which to look at every situation. Not just one, not some, not even the ones we want to hold on to ourselves, but every situation. David still, though, displayed an unwavering confidence in who he was and who God was, in the fact that God had already chosen him. He said, I kept my father's sheep. I kept my father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear. And they took a lamb from the flock. They took a baby lamb from the flock. And I went out after them and I smote him and I delivered it out of his mouth. And he almost paused to say, and I would have left him alone then, but guess what? And when he rose against me, <laughs> I caught him by his beard, and I smote him, and I killed him. See, it took him to keep coming after me, and that's why I did what I did. Now you got this Goliath who's coming after the armies of the living God. The, David's only response to Saul's doubt was what God has done before. He'll do again. Yeah. He refuted the negative that the king gave with a positive solution and a positive declaration. The God that delivered me then will deliver me from this Philistine also. That's the God I serve. Moreover, he did the same with the lion and the paw of a bear. Saul said unto David, 
Since you have this confidence, go and the Lord be with thee. Now, in my studies, and I've never seen this before, but um, in stature and uh, experience, Saul was really the only one that really could have physically fought Goliath. So he sent him on because he wasn't going to fight. Saul was the king, but David had the anointing. David's confidence was not dictated by what the king thought. David's confidence came from knowing God. He already knew what God would do. He already trusted in who God was. See, we don't like to talk about the past. You know, we don't. Well, don't bring up my past. Don't bring up my past. Don't bring up my past. But you got to look back to know how far God brought you from. Now, you ain't got to look back and get stuck back. But you, you, when you're in a situation, when you're facing another challenge, because yeah. oftentimes they look alike. You know, they, 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 they might be the challenge right now, and, and, and now I got, or back then, and now I got another one that looked kind of like that. If I look back, I remember. But oftentimes we get kind of stuck in that problem. And instead, we're looking at the Goliath. We're looking at him because we're standing face to face with him. We're looking at him because he's taunting us. We're looking at that problem because they keep calling, because they keep complaining, because they keep bringing it to us. But if we would pause and look back with our spiritual eye and see what God has already done, and that, that same God that back then did what he did, that same God has already promised he'd never leave us and he'd never forsake us. And even while we're dealing with this issue right now, we, we you know, we got, we, we need a pastor. Mm -hmm. We got a little back. Mm -hmm. What has God already done? Mm -hmm. God, God already gave us a good pastor. Mm -hmm. He gave us one. In the past, we had a good pastor who leaned on the Lord, mm -hmm. who trusted him and led us with wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we got to believe that God's going to do that right now. We got to stand on that. We got to walk in that. And we got to be confident as we walk in that. We can't walk in that with our head hanging low, looking like we are already defeated. We can't be looking at the situation and saying, oh, I'm just a grasshopper. Oh, no, you a member too. You a member. Now, you better watch what you call yourself. There's a present-day songwriter that says these words in one of her songs. I believe God heals. I believe God makes a way. Yeah. I believe God restores. Uh -huh. I believe he can open doors. Uh -huh. I believe he is the God of peace. Yeah. I believe he's my everything. Yeah. I believe he hears. Mm -hmm. I believe he answers prayers. Yeah. I believe he sees. And I believe he speaks for me. Uh -huh. I believe he'll fight for us. Yeah. And I believe he won't forsake us. Yeah. And then it says, he answers by fire, and he answers by rain. He answers by whatever, 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 I believe God. Because, see, he's in control. So he can do it his way, anyway. Even if I think I have the way, God can answer way above and beyond what I can think. And he will make his, himself known, because that's who we serve. Mark 9 and 23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. If you can believe, if you can believe, now it don't say if you can believe what you want to believe, then all things are possible to him that believe it. You know, I tell myself that this, 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 this thing right here, get ready to break when I sit on it. <laughs> no, if you can believe that God is God, if you can believe that God is a reward of them that diligently seeks him, if you believe that God's will will be 
done, all things are possible to him that believe it. If you can believe the word of God, then all things are possible to him that believe it. Don't limit, is what I'm saying. Don't limit God in your life. Don't limit God because your little faith is limited. Do what's necessary to grow your faith so that you can believe that God can do all, all above all that we can ask or think. That's who God is. In a situation like David was faced with, you have to ask yourself, do I believe that my God can deliver me? When the challenge comes to you, do I believe that my God can deliver? Goliath was talking trash. And he talked trash even about the armies of the living God. David knew that should not be. For David, it was blatant disrespect. And it was blatant disrespect to the Almighty One. See, we'll get all fired up, boy. When we see a child disrespecting their mama in the grocery store. I remember, ooh, I wanted to grab him. Well, what about God? Mm -hmm. how, how you feel, believer? Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel? You, you got to answer. We, we have to answer for ourselves. How we feel when someone is defying God? Mm -hmm. When someone is doubting God? When someone's making a mockery of God? How, what what that do for you, believer? When you already know who God is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you say. Let me say that. You say you know who he is. So the question is, how do you feel about that? David was fired up, fired up, and he was ready to fight. He tried to give Saul in verses 38 through 44 that are not printed. He tried to give him his armor, mm -hmm. and he right. took it yeah. at first because he was obeying the king. Mm -hmm. But then he said, uh-uh, <laughs> I can't do this. I ain't proved this stuff. Yeah. And you know, that's a weight. That was a weight for him. I, how I'm going to do this with this stuff on me that I ain't even tried? I don't know if this stuff going to work, but what I do know is going to work is God. I know that God will work. So he picked up five smooth stones from a stream, and he put them in his shepherd's bag. What do you have in your bag that's been proven to work? What do you share with others in your toolbox, we like to say? that you know works. Why are we talking and giving folk all the time to talk about what we know ain't gonna work when we have the answer? Mm -hmm. We do. If you a believer, you got the answer. You might not know the way, but you know it's Jesus. You know it's Jesus. And so you can tell them it's Jesus. And he can, I don't know nothing else, but I know Jesus will make a way. I don't know nothing else, but I know Jesus is the answer. I may not be able to tell you exactly how to roll that out, but what I can tell you is Jesus will show you if you ask him, if you pray to him, if you confess. You got, we got to do some confess because, see, we don't like that part. We don't want to admit our fault. We don't want to admit that I was saved yesterday and I ain't talked to the Lord since I got saved. We don't want to admit that, but we got to, we got to be real because you think about it. Somebody calling you their friend, you ain't talked to them, and who know me? Matter of fact, last time you saw them, they didn't even speak, but they say, <laughs> I had somebody like that. I said, okay. Okay. So, because what you are to me and what, what I am to you are two different things. And your viewpoint does matter. So, I got to be real with me, you be real with you. But you know how it is. They saying this, that, and the other, and they don't even know you. They might have known you 20 years ago, but they don't know you now. And, and, and that's hurtful. It don't feel good. And it don't feel good to God that his children, who he has made a way for and established, established prayer for, a way to communicate with him, won't even talk to him. Won't even pray. But love to talk. And love to talk about. And I guess it's the counselor in me. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a professional uh, uh, LPC licensed professional. They they're the ones that have to sit and listen to it all. I get kind of a little irritated with all that. I I just tell you, 
what 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 you need to do. You're gonna need to talk to the Lord about it. You're gonna have to seek your answers from God. And, and you know, I don't know. I guess that's just how He made me. But I ask you, what's in your bag? You got some tricks. You got some poison. You got some money. You know, because we think money is the solution to everything. Do you have any confidence? Or do you have some boldness? Do you have some trust for God in your bag? Whatever you got that's beneficial, share it with someone. Amen. Goliath content, continued taunting, especially when he saw David. He said, am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his God. Come over here and I'll give you your flesh to the birds and the animals, Goliath, yeah. Mm -hmm. But David didn't let that bother him. Mm -hmm. David walked on in faith. Mm -hmm. I love this, this uh, verse. Mm -mm. It ain't in the printed text. Verse, let me find it. How David, uh, <laughs> David said, I ain't playing with you. <laughs> he said, I ain't playing with you. The Philistine, verse, 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 verse. Hmm. I gotta find it, y'all. Hmm. No, I can't see. That's just part of my problem. Mm hmm. verse 48. Right. It says, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted mm -hmm. and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Right. And if that ain't confident, yeah. he wasted no time with this. Yeah. We ain't got to waste no time with this. Yeah. He, he, although physically nobody expected that out of him. Nobody expected him to stand up. Nobody expected him to run to him. I know all y'all remember fights when we were kids. When nobody running, everybody was walking around in a circle. Kept walking in that circle. Kept walking. Sometimes they say, baddest man hit my hand. And they waiting on one to move to move like, like they're scared. And then somebody pushed somebody in the circle. And nobody had to push David. David said, I'm going to show you confidence. He didn't hesitate. He stood on his words. He told the Goliath, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. But I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. I come because you talking trash about the God that I serve who's going to show you this day who really is Lord. So Goliath stood as a stature above David. Nothing Goliath had. His sword, his spear, his shield, or his words phased David. Yeah. David's faith was in God alone, yeah. and that's where we have to be. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near him, David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He put his hand in his bag, he took a stone, and he slung it, and he smote him in his forehead. This big old tall yeah. smote him in his forehead, yeah. It sunk in his forehead and he fell on his face yeah. to the earth. Yeah. The earth that the Lord God that he yeah. was criticizing yeah. made. Yeah, and David dealt with him a little further. Yeah. So a confident faith, faith is what our Sunday school lesson is teaching us about. Yeah. We have signed up to be a part of God's army. Uh -huh. And we know the old saints of old sang that song, God don't want no coward soldier. God don't want no coward soldier. Y'all know what it means to be a coward. We want the truth of the matter. And the truth comes from the word of God. Confident faith will make you hurry. It'll make you move. It'll keep you from sitting down because your confidence is not in yourself. 
but your confidence is found in the God that we serve. So I ask you again, just like James Cleveland said, oh Christian, you say that you love the Lord, but yet you complain as each day departs. Now into each life, some rain must fall. So where? Where is your faith in God? March on, onward, Christian soldiers, marching out to war with the cross of Jesus. That's what we follow, y'all. Going on before us all, looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith, looking unto God, who is our help. Our help today, he's been our help in the past, and he's our present help even in our times of, st yeah. of struggle. That's the God that we serve. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And amen. Yeah. I submit this as our Sunday school lesson for today. Yeah. Facing life with confidence. Yeah. Not in ourselves. Uh -huh. Not in man. Mm -hmm. But our confidence is in the God that we serve. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Yeah. Father God, we do come again with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Lord God, for your, your word. We thank you for David. We thank you for the confidence that he had that encourages us to keep on, to run on and see what the end is going to be. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us direction, for giving us your word, and for strengthening us, Lord God, along the way. We love you, Lord, and we want to do what's pleasing in your sight. And we know that we can only do it if we trust and follow you, Lord God. We thank you, and now, Lord, we ask you that as we prepare our hearts for worship, you help our minds to stay focused on the Word of God. Help us to do that which we have been called upon to do so that we will be glorifying you in all that we say and all that we do. It is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.